Hey y'all, this is Keely from Orbital Events and I'm here today meeting virtually with Eric from Dead Rosemary Blue. Um, Eric, can you basically give us a few words about your band for people who are just tuning in to this interview? Yeah, um, so my name's Eric. I'm the singer for Dead Rosemary Blue. Um, we have Paco on guitar, Christian's on uh, bass keys, and then Nick's on drums. Uh, originally started off with just Paco and I, and that uh, was when I was in college still. So the band's been around for a couple of years. We've been putting out recordings for a little while now, and we just started recording in the studio like a week before everything happened with the quarantine. So we've been really excited. We've been really busy actually up until recently. So, yeah. Nice. So you've been um, busy. Uh, have you been working on music during this quarantine, like writing and uh, or recording? I haven't actually as much as I want to be, which is kind of like not disheartening because I'm still playing a lot. But I think a lot of people I know are like in a weird state, state's this kind of thing right now where like they want to write or they are writing, but it's not the same as like when they're able to like digest it and give it to other people. You know, and actually see their expressions when they show it to them. But we do I actually have a lot of music to work on with the band right now. Um, so we have a lot of things in the works. And by the time this is all over, we'll probably have some stuff coming out and then just be ready to kind of do over some music videos for the songs we've been recording. Um, but it's been a little bit of a... a it's kind of inspirational when you're like stuck in your room, you know? I think if you're like a musician or anybody really, if you're an artist or you're into making things, because you have to like kind of you have to be in your head and what's been happening kind of forcing people in their heads for both like the better and worse and i think it's going to be a good result for our band we're going to have a lot of stuff coming in the next few weeks nice um so what is the first thing that you guys as a band are going to do after the quarantine is over have you planned that fire ahead um they'll probably i don't want to say anything that's going to be They'll probably want to go out as a band because we're all friends. So they will probably really want to just meet up and play. Actually, the biggest thing will be just meeting up again and getting to play. And, you know, not having it be kind of like a social taboo to have everyone over at your house. Because right now I think there's a little bit of like an anxiety looming over everybody's head. Yeah. To like have, whether it's a friend or a partner or like an older relative, anybody over, let alone a musician. So... I think the first thing we'll do is play together again and then they'll probably want to go out and like get something to drink. I know I want to go get some food. I think that's the one thing we, we kind of miss. Nick, Nick is my roommate, the drummer's roommate. So we kind of all miss just being able to go get food and like, you know, go, go buy beer without being horrible people. So yeah, that's, that's the, the first thing we'll be doing is just getting to play. And then honestly with, with every other band I'm involved in, that's the most important thing is getting to play live again. Mm -hmm. So just going back to right back to playing live again because that was kind of what we were getting into a lot right before everything kind of got quiet for a bit. Was playing music live. Nice. Um, so looking back, like over all the shows that you've played with Dead Rosemary Blue, like um, do you have a favorite show that you've played? Oh, I wish they were all here because then they could all choose like. Because everyone has like their own show, you know, that they really remember where they're like, that was the best. That was my best performance. I can definitely remember like ones that were some of my favorite shows, but not my best performances. Um, I would say the time we played in TJ was really memorable. We went to TJ. We had a friend uh, kind of get us into this, this bar thing. And we were still kind of starting off. It was like the first few months we'd been a band. So that was really like just like intriguing to get to like play. We call, we would call we were saying we were playing overseas. We we're across the border. We're like we're, we're overseas now. <laughs> nice. Playing we're international. That was that was really fun. Uh, but I think if I were to think of shows that are memorable, there was a place. I, I think you probably know the name of it. It was in Temecula, and they used to host shows like live shows, and like art shows, and uh, they had us play there twice. I would say those shows were incredibly memorable starting off just having like makeup on and just I, I remember being very tired because I worked full time and I did school and then just like feeling super energized for that show because that place was just like a warehouse you know You're kind of allowed to be a little more free than like a, you know a bar or something where there's like almost like social expectation to be like a band 
and to fit in as the role of the band while people are trying to be like entertained. Um, and then also the most recent shows, like I think you came to the, you know, the other bands I've been playing and also those are really fun. And then when we played with Edwards Mary Blue, um, that, you know, I think Sarah was also with and we had some other people in Vista do, the Vista Night Out. That was cool. Not just because it was a turnout, but because I, I chose to dress up as a school girl. And that was like a bucket list thing. So definitely, definitely the school girl was, that was a good choice. Nice. <laughs> that was a good choice for sure. So you like um, dressing up like in different costumes and stuff for your performances. Like where did that inspiration kind of like come from? Like, do you have any kind of um, person that you kind of took inspiration for or from for that? Um, I think I've always been just kind of weird. My mom, my mom always, uh, she was, and I remember it too, like my earliest memories are like walking around like in a Casper costume. And then like next week it was like a firefighter costume and then it was Batman and then the Power Ranger. But I would wear the costumes like throughout the year. So I think I've always had like, just like a really strong, just like affinity for like, just wearing things, costumes. But I think around when I was like 14, I just remember being very like a very feminine boy and, and then being very uncomfortable about it. And then just kind of discovering rock music, like really starting to discover it. My, I had a friend who, who passed away like last November and he was kind of the first person to really get me into like metal and stuff. And, and I remember he would like bring me CDs and like, there was like, you know, it was like a bunch sevenfold with like a skull on it and that big. And that was kind of cool. And then like, you know, I got into other bands that were very like dress up y, you know. That was kind of the area that we grew up in where like bands were kind of almost like anti anti what rock was for a long time. I think there was a period in the two thousands where it was just like the post new metal thing where everyone was just like very it was very masculine. It was very hyper masculine in a way. So I think I just really I've always liked that. I don't know why I've always had a love for just like bizarre imagery or like androgynous kind of I think it's almost like part and parcel of like music and the music itself is kind of androgynous it's kind of neutral in a way um so I think that was probably mostly where it came from I don't know if I can think of like one person who I really like always kind of look to you know I think there was a lot a lot of people especially when I was younger because you just want to emulate people when you're younger um but I think if I had to think of like someone who like I still like a lot I think I take after, I like a lot of actors a lot more than I look after like musicians. I really like Ezra Miller. He's a guy from First Being Wildfire. And he was the dude in Harry Potter with the, with the bull haircut. So he's, I think he's a great actor. And he's done a lot of stuff too, where he's like in a band as a drummer. And then he's also touring independently. And then he's also like doing music. And I, I've always liked that because I grew up wanting to be like comic book artist. I didn't get into music until I was like around 14, 15. You know, I started trying to learn guitar, and I didn't try to learn to sing till I was like twenty. So that's why it took it took a long time for me to like. I was pretending to know how to sing for a while. Um. So, if you could have anybody um like act in a music video of yours, since you said that you're into actors, um, mm -hmm. like who would you pick, like who as a cast, like for a music video? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think, yeah, I have to choose a really, like, you know, when we you know when they make movie, songs about, like, a band and the, the band chooses, like, really attractive actors to play themselves? Like, you don't look anything like them? I'd probably choose, like, some woman. I'd play, like, I think we'd have to do a, I would say I'd want to get, uh, Carol, what is her name? Um, I'm trying to think of someone I want there. That's a really good question. I think I want Winona Ryder. I want grown Winona Ryder right now to play me. <laughs> so that, I, I could see that. That would be. Yeah, I want. I always because I always got that compare. I used to have a jacket. I made. I like scream. I made it and then like I sewed it onto the jacket and took a photo of her when she's younger. And it was. It's a print. The photo of her with the black shirt on like a photo. A shirt that's black. And like I used to cut, have my hair cut kind of like her. So I think like we do some kind of video with like her playing us but like they, they're playing you know they're playing the instruments or something um but i've always loved i love shia labeouf 
I think Shia LaBeouf is a wonderful actor. Um, I love, yeah, probably have to be Shia LaBeouf. He's like the man. I, I think it was like people who like everybody hates, you know, especially like actors because everyone has like their favorites, but I tend to always kind of like the ones that are like, like they burn themselves before or like done something on stage that was kind of weird, you know, and then they kind of come back and like, re, you know, regain popularity. Like Joaquin Phoenix right now is like incredibly popular because he's the Joker. But for like a good number of years, Joaquin Phoenix was like, you know, he was Joaquin Phoenix. So I don't really cared about Joaquin Phoenix. So I think I want, I want to probably choose an actor like that, you know, I want like Michael Bolton or something random too, like a singer who likes to just show up randomly in places and um, some dude with like really long hair. Um, so speaking of that, like uh, who would you want to have like collaborating with you on a song? Like if you could pick anyone, any artist at all mm -hmm. or band, um, like who would you like to collaborate with? I think the band, if, if we were to be a band right now, I know a lot of us would love to you know, play with artists who aren't really around anymore. I know like Danny, our guitarist, Paco, he, he would he would love to work with like Jeff Buckley probably. I would probably too. Um, you know, but uh, you know, when you get to musicians like that that you really adore, sometimes it feels like they're on a different caliber than you. They're just like on a higher level almost. Um, getting when we first started the band, I think John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, that was something that was really, his music, when he was like on heroin and he left the band to just like do heroin and be like existential. I, I love those albums. I think I, if I were to make an album, just really, like I would love to work with someone who's just really out there. Um, someone like that, probably. I, I adore Justin Bieber. I'd probably do, I'd probably make an album. I'd probably make a song with Justin Bieber and I don't use anybody. That's always been like the, the secret, the secret love in the band is that I, I secretly love Justin Bieber. <laughs> I was uh, actually going to ask you if you had any like guilty pleasures, like any musical guilty pleasures. Is that one of them? Yeah, he's, he's so cool. I love Justin Bieber. He's just like, like I, I think it's because um, a, a very instrumental part of the band in terms of vocals is there's a kind of R&B kind of element to it. And there's also a kind of like a croony kind of like 1950s element to it also underneath it. Um, and the older I get, the more that I can show just because the more I'm able to play and practice and experiment. But right at that time, really when the band started, I had, I had been, I played one show in front of people. And I remember because I had ponytails. There's a footage somewhere, if you look for it, at Cal State San Marcos, somewhere like in their little videos. I was on like the website for a while. I played a cafe and I had like little face heart tattoos and like eyeliner and like booty shorts and tights and uh yeah like little hair space buns and all this stuff and like right after that I met uh I met up again with with Paco and then we kind of introduced me to everybody else in the band and they kind of adding in later on years later but you know we what was the question um the question was <laughs> <laughs> it was like about your um like musical guilty pleasure oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's where i was going okay i thought i was going somewhere I, um <laughs> so we kind of we got along with because we liked like he liked the chili peppers and i liked chili peppers and i got he liked jeff buckley and i liked jeff buckley and like you know he had long hair and i had long hair and like then we kind of all sent off to to like other bands and um and I was trying to sing a lot and I would just, I had a lot of, I had a lot of trouble. As much as I love singing, I was, I was new to singing. And like anyone who knows, like when you're new to singing and you're playing live, like it's pretty difficult. You know, mm -hmm. it's like performing something that you're not used to live. Um, and I went to, I went to, uh, this is all related. I went to a party. It was one of the first parties I went to in college. 